Well, welcome back chaps and ladies. Um, what are we doing today? Uh, well, I've been messing about in and out of the workshop and the weather's been absolutely god awful. A uh, combination of snow, sleet, hail and a lot of rain. And it's just above freezing today. Um, the workshop's dried out after its minor flood underneath my door. There's that much rain coming down, hitting the door, running down. It's actually uh, flooded back under the step. Uh, so I've, I've had to lash up a sheet to throw the water off. Anyway, uh, I've had a, a day making up um, these little scraper handles. Um, and I've made up a dozen just for making up some scrapers. Uh, yeah, the problem is to do that, I have to shift a load of gear around to get to my wood turning lathe. Um, I'm now waiting on the steel for making the, shaper, the scraper shafts. So that kind of puts me on a hold. I should be getting the materials for the bottom of the bulkhead uh, today by courier. Um, so I figured whilst I've got everything pulled about, in order to finish off my uh, scrapers, I've got to use the shaper. To use the shaper, I need to clear out the steel at the side. In amongst that steel is some box section I was going to use to make up a frame to hold the bulkhead in here for welding up so i figured i might as well get on with that make that frame up um means moving the steel around one less time and uh that's the part we ended up with at the end of the last video uh i've got a couple of modifications to do to fit um mainly to do with this this edge which is the uh, best to describe it that fits against the flange for an half an hour at which the door seal fits into um, so I've got to extend that a little bit I've cut it back too short uh, don't know how but you know it's no, no great loss um, but it is not working out too well having to take it out offer it or draw little lines on come back tweak it so I'm gonna stop pissing about and make up the frame, get the bulkhead in here, and then actually start putting the thing together in here. So that's the plan. We're not staying long out because it's wet and cold. Um, just offering up, these are the generic replacement parts from YMC or YRM or whatever they're called. Um, problem is I haven't really got a datum for that way. So I've got to start with this matching up the owl and I know it's sitting high that will give me the position of these hinge points which match up with the hinge points there so I'm going to shuffle left and right and then that's the piece I've made however it ain't fitting as well as I'd like um, the only thing I've got to clamp it to is the rusty fur lange that's left on the inside skin and I know that that edge there should be sitting underneath that one. Yeah. So we've got a bit of buggering about to do, I think. Um, it is trying to hang it onto nothing. And I can't hope to weld it to. And I'm out my depth. Still, it's not stopped us so far. So I've moved that up about uh, eighth of an inch, three sixteenths that way. Now, because this is sitting high, because it's sitting on top of the piece it's got to replace, everything's going to be a little bit of a, a fudge, but that's actually working a lot, working out a lot better now. Um, I think that that should line up with that. It don't. <coughs> uh, that lines up nicely though, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> But if I lift this end so that the bottom seam there lines up with the where I think it has to go on there. You can see how it lines up a bit better with the other one. So my furlange on my insert needs a bit of a uh, bit welding on. Well I'm just trying I'm just trying to get a rough idea as to how things are gonna to go together uh, and more importantly how the bleed now I'm gonna weld them on get the sequence because that bit uh welds onto this 
you know, it's actually made us all one, but um, this has got too many holes in it. So it'll come off. So then that goes on. And then I need a piece that will fit into that. So that's got to come off. And I'm thinking that that needs to go on first and then fit that bit to it and then this bit to it. But that might change in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> it's a, as somebody pointed out, it's a three-dimensional jigsaw where uh, Granny's lost all the corners but replaced them with some well-chewed bits. <laughs> nice. Looking at that return here and how far it comes down, it's only doing half of that gap. So I think I'm going to have a gap there when I put that replacement piece up because this is about what inch and a half versus that which is an inch, which is fucking annoying. Um, so I think I'm going to need to make up a piece that will go the full width and then weld that to it and then my piece to it. Yeah, bit annoying that. One of my bugbears is trying to hold relatively small flat pieces to clean them up, yeah, to take, take the scale off. Because uh, you're forever working around the thing you're holding. That's me welding squares. If you, as long as you line them up the right way around so they stick together, then it's pretty good. Handy little tip, and that's for now. Now for the welders out there, uh, <coughs> look away. For those of you that haven't really played with TIG, that's, uh, what we're we on, about eighth inch, uh, three mil, and uh, that's about the best weld I've done. I mean, yeah, there's faults with it, and there's dips, and... I had to go back over a section there because I drifted off my line with my puddle. And there's a gap there, but it ain't coming off in a rush. I'm going to redo this edge. That was the first one I did because it's shite. But once I got into the hang of it, everything worked all right. So I say one edge to redo and then uh, we're drilling holes. There you go. That's just gone over the top of it. I mean, there's porosity because I didn't clean the weld out underneath. I think that's why. And a bit there. Anyway, lunch time. We'll let that lot cool down. <coughs> I've used about... What have I used? Two lengths of filler rod and about the same in tungsten. <laughs> so that's the frame put together. It's massively over-engineered, but I've got all the plans for the box section after the bulkhead's done. Um, I think we're uh, making steady progress. Um, certainly feel more in control of it than I was. So much so, I had planned to bolt these, bolt the ends onto the, uh, the lengths. But decided, uh, as it was going reasonably okay, I'd try welding them. And it's quite a comfortable height. So that's what we've done. Yeah, I've, just, I've only seamed them down one side because it's easy enough to split them off then. Bit hot. So what have I found out from the TIG player? Uh, well, don't need much pressure as long as the flow is around about 8 to 10 CFM. Um, this is 3mm sidewall and I'm running at 90 amps. Um, could possibly run a bit hotter and a bit faster but that comes with a bit of time. Um, and for the, for, the, for the linear length that I've welded, um, I've used a fraction of the gas that I used to do, simply because I'm not going back over it and pissing about with it. So yeah, it's definitely a lot easier with a heavier gauge. Anyway, I'll let all that cool down and the uh, next bit I've got to work out is, well, two things. Well, sit, sit a set of legs on it so that it will rotate. So I want some sort of T or inverted T leg at each end. And then uh, I've got to work out how I'm going to fix the bulkhead into it. So I think that's going to be basically probably just weld up some B 
bits of angle iron into it to hold the ball, uh, ball head in. Bit of progress. Don't think we're going to get much off the solar panels today. <laughs> we're just on the edge of where the storms run through and it's dumped a load of snow last night and now it's melting on the in the valleys but it's still quite crispy on top and it's blowing hooly so this is the debris field from the recent floods we've had so the water's come down that fast it swept all the uh, chippings out the side of the road, which the road repair people thought would be a good plant to drip into the uh, soft edges. So you can imagine how much water was coming down here. It's washed all this out, chippings. If they'd have done the repair properly, it'd have been all right. Well, that's the quick lash up. I've got to put a brace across the bottom. Um, and I've got to do probably a brace to each leg. I'm not sure yet, but there's a bit of a wibbly wobbly effect there. I mean, the legs aren't the best, but I mean, from the point of view of what I'm trying to do, that should work. I hope. Well, I'll fix the bracing pieces on. That doesn't wobble now. So give it a good tug. There's very little movement in it. That was a pig of a stuff to weld. So yeah, uh, TIG welding. Try and do it on a bench. It's a pain in the ass. otherwise. Biggest problem, Marvin, is a bloody hat to helmet keeps moving around, then fogs up. Uh, and I'm getting a lot of reflection from around the back of the hood onto the inside of the screen from the lights. So I could turn the lights out, but then I can't see what I'm doing when... Uh, I'm not torching. Well, I keep scratching my head on how best to mount this in the frame. And <laughs> for the first time ever, I've actually got the bulkhead sat on a flat surface and it stands upright. So I'm going to make up a couple of square pads to sit under that part. Same on that part and on the end there. And then I'll just mount them flat across the bottom rail. That'll be the first mounting point. And I might even just tack, tack weld them. Once, once the pads are on there, just tack weld that to it. Um, or clamp them, I don't know yet. Tack weld them, I'll probably. And then I'll have to do something just to hang off the top and catch the top rail somewhere. The problem is I don't want to put something on that is then going to be in the way of the first few bits I put on. I don't mind putting something on which I could take on and off easily. But we'll see. Anyway, it's brass monkey's weather and I've got to go and walk to the dog. Well, we've got the uh, bulkhead temporarily hung. Oops. So it's sat on the two brackets of raised it welded on the bottom. And I'll just put a little pair of little tiny G clamps. What I've found is the bulkhead's actually got a bit of a corkscrew as it goes down. So I'm going to try and pull it back to square because it, it should be. I can't see any reason why when it was made, it would be made as a corkscrew and the chassis pretty straight when I've eyed it over um, but if you like between that point and that point there's an inch and a quarter twist so pull that back it could be just the fact that it's warped as it's been had new footwells welded in in the past been released from the chassis it's then gone boing, boing. so we're bringing it back uh, and I'm, at the moment I've just got some 20 mil box section clamped on uh, and pinned on the edges of the footwell now I can't do it on that side because this one's missing all its top frame here. I've got a straight line up the edge of the um, footwell onto the frame. But on that way, that one, it's fouling all of this. So I've got a bit of jiggery pokery to work with up. Um, I'm just trying to decide. I want to make up some decent bracketry 
which once the foot wells are on, it picks up off the foot wells and everything works to that because that they're going to be the most solid portion on the, on the bottom half. So that's my plan. And then right now, uh, I'm cold. I'm going in for a cup of tea. But uh, look at that. Look at that TIG weld. Look at that. Stacking turt tight dime. Turt tight dimes. Yeah, that's the word. Well, I'm still buggering about trying to get uh, it jigged up. Um, what I'm trying to do is get it so that this face both ends is as near as damn it in the same plane it might not be vertical but it's in the same plane um it's not in the same plane as these which are the edges of the replacement bulk uh footwells um but it does seem to be around about the same plane from here to here as it is from here to here so i'm working on if i can get everything back to that i'm something like so i've just made up these have got a return on the outsides which i know is parallel which means i'm parallel to this point and then i've just put a clamped on return on the inside i'm going to spot it along the top whip it off spot it round and then i'm going to weld these two bits together and the same on that side which then just leaves me with the uh, position at the bottom which i can move in and out just a tad to start bringing them into some, something like. Uh, I'm not happy about the bottom positions though at the moment. Um, there's definitely, definitely a twist down the bulkhead. Well, it's safe to say, aside from the interruptions, that was a bloody nightmare. Uh, I must remember, never try and weld one mil to three mil. It's took me, well, basically, I went to do, doing both of them, and it's took me till the last bit till I got the hang of it. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's on now. It's uh, pretty well there. Afraid I can't get you a decent shot of it because there ain't no room to back up. But it's uh, it's clamped at the bottom. I need to do to decide whether I'm going to just tack weld the the verticals in position, which would I think not be a bad idea or uh, I've got to drill them through and put a bolt through them because I don't want to leave deep G clamps on there because I, I suspect I'll probably need them anyway I've not clamped them at the bottom either I waffle on right well we're done on the uh, framing it all up it's basically trapped on there same on the other side and I've got these panels are in the same plane and the front's clamped up. So I've got to go and open up my box of parts now and see which bits go where and which bits we're going to use and which bits we're not. So, uh, dog walking time first. Looking all right though. Teenagers and they're still playing in the snow.